In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this glossy polished text. I'll be using Blender version 2.68a. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the file menu, select new, then click on reload startup file. Now delete the cube by pressing X. Now let's add some text. So press shift A and then select text. I'll zoom in on this. Next, let's rotate the text along the X axis. So press R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now to change the text, go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab, then Backspace to delete, and then enter your new text. Now press Tab again to return to Object Mode. Next, click on the Object Data button. Then set the Extrude value to 0.03 to give the text some thickness. The Fill value defaults to both front and back. Change this to None. You can see here that we are left with just the outline of the text. To give the outline a thickness, we can add a bevel. So I'm going to set the bevel depth to 0.007. I'll also set the resolution to 4 to round out the edges. Now we have the outside of our text. To make the inside, start by pressing Shift D to duplicate the text. We need the duplicate to be in the same position as the original text, so press 0 and then Enter. Now for the fill, select both. Then remove the bevel by changing the bevel depth and resolution values to 0. Now let's set the material for the inside text, so click on the Material button, and then click New. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. For the surface type, select Glossy. Make sure that the roughness value is set to 0. Then set the color to a gray color. Now let's set the material for the outside of the text. So right-click on it to select it, then click on the New button and set the surface type to anisotropic. This is similar to glossy except that it will look darker around the edges. Make sure that the roughness value is set to 0. Then click here to set the color. I want the outside of the text to look like gold, so I'm going to set this to a light yellow color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then click on the hex button and enter E7D17F. Now let's set up the light source. For this I'm going to switch to orthographic mode. I can do this by pressing 5 on the number pad. Then switch to right side view by pressing 3 on the number pad. Now zoom out until you can see the light source. Then right click on the light source to select it and drag it close to the camera. Then drag it down some. Now switch to front view by pressing 1 on the number pad and move the light source to the center of the text. Now click on the object data button if it's not already selected. Then make sure the point lamp is selected and then set the size to 3. Now click on the use nodes button. You'll probably want to experiment with the strength value but I'm going to set it to 3000. Now let's zoom back in on the text. Next, let's add a surface behind the text. So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. Then rotate it along the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now to position the plane, switch to right side view by pressing 3 on the number pad. Then drag the green arrow until the plane is positioned at the edge of the text. This is what it looks like from the front. Now let's scale the plane up in size, so press S, then 100, then Enter. Next, let's make a surface for the plane to sit on. So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. Now to position the plane, switch to front view by pressing 1 on the number pad. Then drag the blue arrow until the plane is positioned at the bottom of the text. Now let's scale the plane up in size, so press S, then 100, then Enter. 
Now is a good time to save what I've done so far. So from the file menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name this gloss.blend. Next, let's set up the camera view. So switch to camera view by pressing zero on the number pad. I'll zoom in a little. When I'm in camera view, I like to lock the camera to the view. So to do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate the view while looking through the camera. So now I'll position the text. It doesn't need to be perfect because I'll be adjusting it later. Now let's set the material for the plane that's behind the text. So right click on it to select it, and then click on the material button if it's not already selected. Then click on the new button. I'm going to keep the default diffuse surface type and white color. Now select the plane that's below the text by right clicking and let's set the material for it. So click on the new button, then for the surface type, select Mix Shader so that we can combine two different shaders. For the first shader, select Diffuse. Then for the second shader, select Glossy. Set the roughness value to zero. Also set the FAC value to 0.2 so that the Diffuse shader will be stronger than the Glossy shader. To get a better look at what we have so far, let's switch to rendered view. If you look at the edges of the text, you will see that there are black areas where the light does not seem to be reflecting properly. To fix this, right click on the outside of the text to select it, then click on the Object Modifiers button. Now click Add Modifier and select Edge Split. Now the text is reflecting light the way that I would expect it to. Next, let's go back to the bottom plane and add a checkered pattern to it so that the text will have something interesting to reflect. To do that, right click on the bottom plane to select it, then click the material button. Now for the diffuse material, click the little button on the right side of the white color and select checker texture. Since we scaled up the size of the plane, I'm also going to scale the size of the checker pattern. So I'll set the scale value to 500. These are the two colors that are used for the checker pattern. Click on the white color and make it a little darker. Now come down to the glossy shader and click on the little button on the right side of the white color. Select checker texture, then set the scale to 500. Next, to make the scene more interesting, I'm going to rotate the camera. You can select the camera by clicking on it here. I'm going to rotate it by minus 20 degrees, so I'll press R, then minus 20, then enter. Then zoom, pan, and rotate the view to move it into the position that you want to render. Now we're ready to render the final image, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. Now let's set things up for rendering. So click on the Render button. Then open the Sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 300. I'm also going to set the clamp value to 0.98. Setting this value can help prevent unwanted bright pixels from showing up in places where they shouldn't. Now let's render the final image. So come back up here and click on the Render button. I'm going to pause the video until it's done rendering. Rendering is finished, and this is the final image. To save the image, you can click on the Image menu and select Save as Image. I'm going to name this gloss.png. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.